Uh, finally, the hardest cranial nerve, that's number four. Uh, cranial nerve four only innervates the superior oblique muscle. That's all it does. This nerve um, palsy is very subtle. That superior oblique muscle doesn't do a whole lot, but it does enough. And when it gets out, it has very complicated findings. This is a hard palsy to pick up. You know, a lot of neurologists will miss this. A lot of ophthalmologists will miss this because it's not always obvious, and everyone seems to present a little bit different. But classically, if you have a right superior oblique palsy, you'll have that right eye. It's a little hypertrophic, meaning it's pointing up a little. Oops, sorry. I'll go back. It's pointing up a little bit, and also people tend to have a little bit of a head tilt uh, in that direction away from the lesion. So this is a right uh, fourth nerve palsy. They tilt their head to the left, and the causes are manifold. Unlike the other ones that are, you know, have some pretty straightforward ones, really anything can cause cranial nerve four vasculitic, uh, trauma, congenital tumors, and let me show you why. The cranial nerve four is up here under the, uh, I guess it's near the inferior colliculus, basically pops out of the back of the eye, wraps all the way around the brain stem before entering the cavernous sinus. This is a really long nerve. It's long, it's skinny, and it's very susceptible to damage. Uh, basically, the nerve can pull out uh, at its insertion in the back of the brain. Uh, you can imagine any type of tumor or lesion anywhere um, along this course can hit this nerve. Um, really, anything can, can cause a cranial nerve 4 palsy. So, what does it give you? Well, we've already gone over this a little bit, but basically the functional origin of this nerve is up here at the trochlea, bridge of the nose, wraps around the eye, can cause a entorsion extorsion problem. So if the eye can't entort well, it has a tendency to extort, and that's why they have the head tilt. They tilt so that it minimizes the uh, double vision from that, and has more of an up-down motion problem as well. One of the ways I like to conceptualize what that um, superior oblique muscle does is if you pretend that your whole head is a giant eyeball and you wrap your arm up and around the back of your head such that the elbow is the trochlea or that pulley um, at the bridge of the nose uh, you can kind of understand how the eye should move if you pull so basically if you're looking this pretend this is your right eye if you're looking towards your nose over here then when you pull the back of your head your head goes down so up down motion However, if you look off to the side, then pull, you, the head kind of twists like that. And that's more of that entorsion extorsion. So knowing that, we can look at this eye. Now I want you to watch that right eye very closely, the patient's right eye. This is a right fourth nerve palsy. And it moves pretty well. And if someone comes in with this, it's very hard to diagnose. And this is obvious, but in real life, very hard. But if you watch that right eye, watch it as they look over there. Oh, the eye goes up, and it comes back to normal. But that right eye keeps shooting up every time it goes towards the nose, back to normal. It keeps shooting upwards. And that is the key finding with a fourth nerve palsy. Every time the patient looks to the other side over here, this eye has a tendency to shoot in an upwards motion. Because normally, that superior oblique would make you look down. But if it's out, the eye goes in an upward fashion. This is, uh, this is, a, you know, this is a pearl right here. Um, so what kind of activities does this give the patient a problem with? Well, you can imagine that when does the eye look inward towards the nose the most? It's with reading. You try to read a book and the eye is not getting down there all the way. They say, you know what, I'm seeing double vision. The letters are on top of each other. It's driving me nuts. Most of the time I can see just fine, but every time I try to read a book or walk downstairs, it gives me a lot of problems, and that's what a fourth nerve palsy is. And if that's maybe one way you want to memorize you know, what a fourth nerve palsy does is it gives them double vision when they try to read a book. And you can kind of conceptually think about it. So anyway, I, won't, uh, I think I've beaten that to death, so sorry.